Hello, I'm Randy Mason. And I'm Nick Haynes. Welcome to The Local Show. In recent years, you may have dropped by the Folly Theatre downtown for a performance by the Heartland Men's Chorus or City in Motion Dance Theatre or perhaps to hear a concert in the Harrum and Jewel series. Joyce DiDonato and Roseanne Cash will grace the stage there this weekend. But decades ago, Kansas City came perilously close to losing the folly to the wrecking ball, a fate that befell all of its contemporaries. But as you're about to see in this edition of our Perform Arts series in conjunction with KC Studio Magazine, against all the odds, this 112-year-old theater at 12th and Central is very much alive and well. Folly has been here since 1900, originally designed by Lewis Curtis. He designed a number of buildings in the Kansas City area, and then in 1901, it changed over, so it did not remain the standard for very long, and the shows were the burlesque and vaudeville, and oh, some long-running plays at that time. Abe's Irish Rose was one that was a long-standing program. So she is the grand old lady of 12th Street, and she still remains as the oldest theater in Kansas City. But this might be the image that springs to mind for a great many Kansas Cityans. The brand of dance and disrobing that the Folly focused on after reopening its doors under that name in 1941. A style that over the decades grew more and more risque. In fact, by the time it closed in 1974, the Folly had X-rated skin flicks in the mix as well. Within a few more years, it seemed doomed to become another downtown parking lot. The pigeons had dumped about nine and a half tons into the theater from all the broken windows and everything else. One of the chandeliers had actually fallen down into the balcony. It, it was horrible. When Joan identified this building and saw that it was possibly destined for the wrecking ball, she stopped Charlie Wheeler in the street and said, we've got to do something. We must save this building. Joan Dillon and her husband, George, along with other local luminaries like Bill Doremus and Mayor Wheeler, not to mention Walter Cronkite, helped lead the charge that turned the tide, ushering the folly into a brand new era in November 1981. But it's one thing to turn on the lights and another to sell enough tickets to enough different shows to keep the enterprise afloat. Cynthia Siebert has been a believer from the very beginning. Her friends of chamber music have made the Folly their full-time home since 1985, largely for one simple reason, how good it makes soloists and small ensemble sound. Invariably, the artists say this is one of the very best halls I've ever played in. In fact, Lincoln Center Chamber Music Society said, my goodness, we couldn't believe it. Each one of us separately said, oh, you've got to go out there and see what it sounds like in the audience. Those top-notch acoustics aren't just in the ears of classical music fans either. The Follies Jazz Series has been a staple for much of the last 30 years, playing host to both the best of the old guard and ambitious young lions like pianist Vijay Iyer, who stopped by with his trio in mid-October. We've had uh, artists here who come in and they say, hey, I'm thrilled to play on this stage because I know that you know the Marx Brothers played on this stage. I know Humphrey Bogart was on this stage. And I think that history has a relevance, yes. As a member of the Follies board, Bill Shapiro has been doing his share and more to bring a new audience into the hall. The concert series, based on his popular public radio program, targets rock, pop, gospel, and folk fans who might find the Sprint Center too big or club shows too noisy. The acoustics in that room are phenomenal. The other thing is that the proximity of the audience to the stage is amazing. The throw between the front of the stage and the balcony is 50 feet. Almost every artist that I've brought in over the last six, seven years has commented on what an amazing place this is. Randy Newman told me it was the best room acoustically he had ever played anywhere. 
what the Folly has never had is a spacious stage, or plenty of room in the wings. But despite that, the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater has used it consistently over the years, for public performances at night, and for school groups like these during the day. Because the Folly also produces a children's series of its own, the sight of young people streaming through the doors is nothing out of the ordinary. Watching all these kids, ushering them into the theater, and then listening to them as they see their first live performance in many cases, it's very rewarding. We know that they'll remember it for years to come. In all the years that we've been here, which is now 27 years, never once had a problem with the stagehand, with the house manager, everything has gone perfectly smoothly. Now, I've had heaters and boiler systems that have been a little too loud. We tend to routinely turn them off during the concerts if we can. And, and there are the charming issues of the sirens from outside that do penetrate the wall. But that you will have in almost any major city. In other words, 100-year-old homes have their issues. And the arrival of a certain new hall just a few blocks away has made that even more apparent. Obviously, everybody wants to be at the Kaufman Center and see all the wonderful new shows there in the beautiful building, and it is extraordinary. But I think that the Folly also has a very special place in people's hearts in Kansas City. I think that they are both part of the arts community and will continue to be for a long time. And we're constantly looking for other ways to enhance that bottom line because we, we want to stick around. Which brings us back to where it all began. Burlesque, the comics and singers, Aerialus and Ecdesius, look it up. All playfully packaged together for the 21st century. One of the great things about this show is that we bring um, highlight local performances and local performers that really shine and give them a chance to be a part of this, the vaudeville experience and do what they do in a, in a slightly different construct. We are in fact classy, but what I like about us is that we can really run the gamut from classy to not classy. At mm -hmm. all. Burlesque has been booming across the country lately, and the Folly's status as the real deal back in the day makes it a magnet for the new wave of performers practicing their craft. Despite being lost in the land of the giants, the theater just got easier to find. It's hard to believe, but there's been no external signage on it for almost 40 years, until now. On a surprisingly mild November night, the Follies most faithful took to the streets with champagne in hand to once again light the lights and raise a toast to the grand old lady with best wishes for her next 100 years. Once you've seen certain types of acts here at the Folly, it's just something that's pretty hard to beat. It's a very special experience and very intimate for both the performer and the audience. I've had the pleasure of having one of my grandchildren here for one concert. I want the other one to have a concert and I like for everybody's grandkids to have this. I really think this is important. I think it's important to preserve the integrity of the music, integrity of live performance. 